Okay. Hey, Beverly, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm here with uh, Chief Lynn Jacobs and a whole room full of folks. So you'll have to tell us what you want us to do from here. Okay. Well, um, I would like for you to tell us more about what's going on there in the in in your in the area there in North Carolina around Robeson County and the surrounding area. And tell us a little bit about Three Rivers United uh, Nations and um, also about the center and um, more information about the, the, uh, the uh, petition. I can talk about the petition. Okay. your name again? I'm not sure if I caught it the first time. Um, Lynn Jacobs. Lynn Jacobs, okay. And and what was the what was the issue surrounding the the uh, the part of the petition that talked about um, this this lease situation that you were referring to? What what exactly you know, what exactly was that about? What, what's the lease agreements about? Well, years ago, the state set this area up as a cultural center, Native American cultural center for all Native people in North Carolina. And they leased it to the Native people in North Carolina and set up a nonprofit organization to run it. It was on a 99-year lease at a dollar a year. 
Algonquin and Siouan cultures. And that was the amalgamation. That's what took place here um, early on, 16th, 1700s, and this is where people came together when they, they were being pushed and pushed. We were the first trilogies. We had the longest walk because we walked from the Virginia shores to, from Virginia and we migrated down in three patterns of the three, uh, the three rivers that was here. And so that was supposed to be the idea of it. And that's the idea that the Board of uh, Directors of the North Carolina Indian Culture Center had. And they, and they had put it into a beautiful plan. I mean, it was, it was actually awesome. So over 30 years, it was a, a continual fight. There was a golf course that was put in here at some time, an annoyance to a lot of the Native people. Um, Indian people didn't play golf, but it come into our midst, and I'm not sure who brought it in around 1964 or so. And um, that's when they first discovered the burial uh, remains of humans here on the grounds. That was the first archaeological study on annoyance to the people who lived here. Then they come back in 1974 and they did another uh, dig. By that time, uh, they had dug a lake. We have a 100-acre lake here that was not there back then. It was like a small run or a river, and it ran into the Lumbee River, or the Lumber, what they call now. But um, there was a lot of history here, a lot of hidden treasures that the folks didn't know about. So that archaeological study of uh, well, Scott, did you have? It, it tells you all about it, what they discovered here. One of the things they couldn't understand is how the white folks come in and had inherited the land with the Indian people still living on it and had always lived on it. And there was never a bill of sale. No bill of sale, no deeds, because our people lived communal. There was no such thing as deeds and titles. They knew they never owned the land. They were only stewards of the land. And uh, so... So golf course becomes the main, I guess you would say, divider of the wedge that they drove. The, they bought the golf course out, or so they said they did. It was another nonprofit. So they bought nonprofit out. You understand what I'm saying? There was no buying the land. They couldn't have bought the land. The lands were to be held forever lands. That's how they were registered, it's forever lands. But yet they come in and said, we bought this land. It was an illegal sale because the, only, the folks that were back there were a non-profit. And you know yourself, you cannot sell out a non-profit to private people. Right. Once, it, once you sell out the non-profit, all of those resources would have went to the next non-profit. They set up a non-profit from 1937, which was the uh, Bibbrook Farms. They did the same thing with them that they're trying to do with us now. They sold it out before the 99-year lease and made it the Red Bank Mutual Association. Then it was the Riverside Country Club, then it was the Lumbee Recreation Center, and then by 1980, it was the North Carolina Indian Cultural Center. The wedge driving had pretty much, let's just throw all of the groups in there, they'll fight and kill each other, and we won't have to worry about them. Well, that didn't happen. What happened was it brought recognition to these folks what was going on, and the board stayed together. But yet the, um, the state of North Carolina had another vicious group, which was called the uh, Commission on Indian Affairs, North Carolina Commission on Indian Affairs. And they tried to stack, from the commission, they tried to stack the North Carolina Indian Cultural Center Board, which was an Ill illegal act. They committed on them up until uh, February of 2011, when the uh, state uh, judge found them guilty of doing that and told them that they couldn't do it anymore. It was an illegal act on a nonprofit, and they had um, violated them on a state level as well as the federal level. So that that little device they were used and played out. So they come in and played all their cards. They killed the lease. They want to just kill the lease and just do away with the North Carolina Indian Coast Center group. And they cannot do that because this is a this is a federal recognized nonprofit organization, state and federal recognized. So they could they know they can't dissolve them, so they're gonna take the land into a ministry. That's their plan. And what and they have two they have two bills and they have a house bill and a uh, a Senate bill that states that that they want to take the lands back, the state of North Carolina. They want to uh, let the Lumbee tribe look at the, uh, the what was the golf course, which are the burial mounds, give them that or give them opportunity to purchase it, and then they take the risk. 
And they tried last year to do this, right? Yeah, they tried last year. And then the the bill died in the committee with the session ending, and then someone revived that again, right? It, it actually it, it shot through the House and the Senate so fast that it didn't make a hit spin. But uh, what happened was one of the senators didn't agree with it, and he killed the bill. Now, is there a current bill to to end the lease, or is there, or is it just that there's a bill now before the House and Senate that uh, would prohibit them from attempting to bring a bill to end the lease? No, there's two bills to actually end the lease. There's a Senate and House bill to just end the lease and to uh, take the properties back to the state and let the state decide what they want to do with it. Okay. So so there's two bills to try to end the lease, and then there's a bill that would prohibit them from ending the lease. Right. The one bill is for the, the North Carolina Indian Cultural Center itself has, yeah, has the bill to preserve the Indian Cultural Center for all tribes and organizations, just like um, it was um, planned to, to do, uh, is to preserve the culture and the history of those um, three indigenous nations. And can you tell me? Can you tell me some more about the um, the Three Rivers United Nations? The Three River not United Nations are actually those three groups of uh, of uh, nations of folks that come together again. All right, let me back up. Okay, we when we just when the plan mothers came together and they decided they'd have enough of what they were seeing. The women really don't have a voice in our uh, Indian business these days, we all notice, because it's all going basically to those rivers we migrated from. So the women decided that we were going to go back to the government in which we were a part of, which was the Iroquois uh, Great Law of Peace. And we started trying to pull together our men um, from the uh, warrior society, basically our men who had served in pretty much every branch of the military and are retired and don't really have any legal ties to government or, you know, anybody else. They're pretty free to protect their communities in the way that they've been called by the Creator. And so we all came together with the Cherokee, the Tuscaloosa Cherokee Indians, the Robinson and Joining County and their chief. And we have a couple of chiefs from a Cherokee to Robinson County, Hope County in North Carolina, and then over in South Carolina. We also have the Suwon, which is a, it's not a it's not a group of people; it's a language, basically. But they are they're un, they're they're a unique group of people. Yeah, and like you said, so um, and then we have the Algonquin people, which are from also the same stock we are from the Virginia area. What is Virginia is known today? Down, they migrated and moved along with us when we all were moving and shifting. We were always trading and, and coming up and down these rivers and our and our trade roads. So it's not like it's a surprise. We're the same people. These folks just come from a different geographical location. They spoke a different language and they were unique in the identity of their culture. So that's that's the thing is we're the same people. And uh, so we united our, our our folks together and uh, we come up under the Great Law of Peace is our law. So the clan mothers are out busy um, pulling together their clan community, our, their clan communities, and actually uh, selecting their star warriors and um, the leadership of the of our government, which is from the clan chiefs down to the star star warriors. And we do have a constitution uh, that was also put together by a committee with Chief uh, Lynn Jacobs. Uh, who led that committee and basically did the work on the on the um, the outcome of it, and it's it's a great it's a great constitution. It's really it's something to read. Hey, Bill, let me know about the three rivers. I can't hear him. Uh, uh, did you hear him? I couldn't hear him. Uh, the three rivers that we were talking about, the migration took place over the Cape Fear, the PD, and the and the and the Long Beach. It was L-O-M-B-E-E, but they call it Lumber today. And the Lumber River or Lumber River is the same as Drowning Creek, right? Exactly. 
So basically, basically the Pee Dee River Settlement, as some have called it, is the the community in, there in Robeson County, which is which consists of uh, various Powhatan tribes, uh, Saponi Tutelo, and other southeastern Siouan tribes, along with uh, Tuscarora and other Iroquoian tribes like the Cherokee. Iroquois, Tuscarora, Cherokee, Meharan, and uh, the Nottaway, the Tutelo, and the. Um, those, we, we actually come down. My people came through and married in. We were Tutelo, Saponi, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. We come out of Virginia, which you know that Scotch from our um, from our backyard, right. and that's you know what people fail to see. They all move around. Has there has have have uh, the clan mothers spoken with anyone from the Okanichi or the Monacans um, about these situations there? We have talked with the um, Okanichi. We were in support of the Okanichi when they got state recognition in the um, in the state of North Carolina. It was a long battle for them to get a seat at the commission, but they they are at the table. And um, I don't know. Once folks go into that commission, it's um, it's a little different. But um, they're good people, and we, we have communications, and we have ambassadors, female ambassadors, with all the tribes in North Carolina. So we are, we're very connected to the communities. What about the what about the the various Powhatan tribes? I know you mentioned uh, a little bit. You touched a little bit on the Meharan. Um, what about the Mattaponi? Or the, I'm sorry, the Mattaponi and the um, Palmonkey. Um, are they aware about? Uh, and I know they're in Virginia, but because of the nature of our community, there are these strong ties. And I guess I'm just trying to uh, figure out how much or what what type of steps people might need to take that would listen to this interview in um, trying to get some unified front. Uh, from the the entire you know East Coast area there, uh, or, you know surrounding Virginia and North Carolina. We have amb female ambassadors in all of those states, and uh, Dr. Sharon Bird is an OBGYN and a surgeon in Virginia. We're actually meeting. Uh, we're meeting with the uh, monkey chief. We actually have a piece of artwork that's going to be presented to him on the uh, on the beaches there in Virginia, and we are trying to build a working relationship with him. We we have the ties, but it's like a it's, yeah. I mean, my people are from monkey. My sister's back there laughing. She said, "Well, my sister, she's a monkey." And uh, I said, "Me." And um, and we come off of the Pamunkey River out of Louisa Louisa County. Uh, our people don't really know much about who they are. They just they just talk one thing when the blood is the same. I mean, they just need to realize the blood is the same. There's nothing wrong with it. And we also have Irish and French blood, Spaniard and those two, and some African American as well. Mm -hmm. So, and I've got, um, there's a lot of, you've got, that's the thing, is that so many people, they, they talk about a tribe and a name, they've lost the focus that they can't see the forest within a tree. Right. Thing, I guess. Today, um, in your meeting today, what what's what's been your main focus in the meeting today? Well, we just come we come together, and, and that's what it is. Is everybody here should have a voice. April the twenty fourth, we will be on the Halifax Mall, which is the lawn of the uh, North Carolina General Assembly. We'll be between the two houses of the House and the Senate. And that's going to be the time that our people have to realize they got to unite. they got to stop worrying about silly things like name calling and realize we've lost everything that belonged to us. But the creators promised it back to us if we'll come together, unite as one, and look to him and follow in righteousness. Follow as of the things that are important. Without the land, we're nothing. Right. Sit back, letting them dig up our ancestors. There's no heart. How could you have a heart if you don't respect your ancestors, which is your past, and preserve the right to pass our staff to the children of the future? Because they are the future. They're the ones going to lead us into the next generation.
So that's, that's our fight as the clan mothers. Stand up for family. Family central. And without land, we have, there's nothing. What do you have to live on? When was the when was the last archaeological dig in that area? Or you know, at the center was that in the 70s or the 80s? 1985, and it was done by Mathis and Garner out of the North Carolina State Archaeological Department. Um, it's interesting if you read that study how they were, they had a lot of concerns of what was going on. But see, there's more than one. There were, there were like 431 burial mounds in, in just in Robinson County. And um, they removed the ones from here. They also removed the ones from what was called the Red Springs Mound. And they came into the Maxton area and they built uh, a camel soup. And they did, dug up many, many uh, burial uh, mounds there in the early, the end of the 70s and the 80s. Yeah, and they removed them. And um, so they've done a lot of damage. Now there's four, there's two thousand in Hope County, which is the adjoining county, and, and there's more than that in Cumberland. And I'm mailing you the information that you can uh, see that for yourself. <laughs> and and uh, just out of curiosity, um, if the if if say uh, you know um, let's say that the the bill that has been introduced. Or I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that it's been introduced, but the bill that would prevent the uh, the ending of the lease, if that, I mean, how, what's what kind of conflict is that bill going to have with these other two bills that are, are that have already been introduced? Would it stop those two bills? Or um, I'm not I'm, I'm not real sure exactly how that works. Do you can you can you explain a little bit about that? Well, when they go in, it's, it's, the, it's the choice of the um, of the uh, senators and House of Representatives because they vote. They vote on what's going to pass and what's not. If it passes the House, then it has to go through the Senate. The bill from last year, like you said, Connie rolled forward. It's a, both of those bills have already been to a finance committee and have been approved. They already have money on the two that they want to uh, take the culture center. Our bill is still sitting in drafting, and uh, it's supposed to be submitted today uh, by 3 o'clock, but they extended it to Tuesday. And we've had uh, members of the tribe and folks from all over uh, the United States, and uh, we've got Russia and Italy and all these other countries that are calling into uh, the uh, Senate, calling our senators and asking them to support and to sign on to the bill. you got to have sponsors for the bill to even be introduced. And we have one sponsor, uh, Senator um, Floyd McKissick, Jr. He signed on to it, and we hope we'll have two or three more by Tuesday. Now the two we're trying to keep everybody just keep calling until, until Tuesday. And the two senators that, that we were calling today... Um, are they are they gonna? Do you think that they will co-sponsor or or how? What do you? What's your view on them and, and their involvement? Well, there are two there are two strong senators that um, when we were going around talking to from door to door, they were two that actually listened to what we had to say, and uh, they didn't brush us off. They didn't tell us it weren't going to happen. They said they want they were interested in and they were going to look into it. And um, I know that they met today, and I don't know what the outcome was. But we're going to keep putting the pressure from the people. Without the voice of the people, calling them, it, it, it will, it'll die. It'll die in the in the uh, Senate, like in draft, and it probably won't even come out without there's one signature is all we need. With the one we already have, there has to be at least two signatures on it. And um, the, the the coming uh, conference that, that is going to be held on the 24th, can you talk a little bit about some of the topics that will be discussed? I know that I know that you had said that uh, the title of it was "Sons and Daughters of the First Peoples: The Call of the Four Sacred Winds," and you had also mentioned that um, that there might be a protest also that day. Well, we don't feel that we have need of protests. We feel that with good speakers and um, all of the tribes coming together, setting up their, showcasing their their individuality as far as culture is concerned, their geographical.
physical location and how we are working together and have been for 12 years. Since I've been here, I've been working with all the tribes. Um, many of the tribes across the nation support American Indian mothers and what we do to support the North Carolina Indian Cultural Center and the Three River United Nations. These groups are, are great community people. They want to they want to know what the future is for American Indians in health, in education, economic development and business, agriculture, and the preservation of their culture. And they, we are looking at the land preservation of uh, sacred places, land recovery, and return uh, the return of the burials, uh, graves, uh, the, the mounds that were disturbed. With, like uh, Chief Jacob said, we want them returned. And from here on out, we hope that our warriors will not walk away from their responsibility and obligations, and that is to take care of those sacred mounds as well as their families. Is, uh, the, the, is the government is that we're, we're capable. We don't need babysitters. Is the university at Chapel Hill, is that one of the universities that has holdings of, our, of the people there? They do. East Carolina, uh, right here from, in Lardenburg, which is Scotland County. St. Andrews uh, has one, has some of them, as well as the uh, uh, the museum that's over in Lardenburg. And UNCP holds some of them, too. But no, I got a call about 12 years ago out of uh, out of uh, Washington, D.C. I, I don't have any of the information because when I was here, it was like a takeover thing from the commission, and they ousted everybody. But there was a person called me from Washington and asked me, would the, we come and get the remains of our people and all of the arts and crafts that come along with them? And that, I was a, that was the early stages of my knowing. I've never been involved in Indian business. I'm still not today involved in Indian business. I'm more into to our sons and daughters of the First Peoples history. But he asked us if we could come and get them because they were tearing down the building. They were going to tear, take down that building. And so I called the Commission on Indian Affairs not knowing, you know, I thought that's what their job was. They said there was nothing they could do. And I called a local nonprofit organization at that time, which were uh, the spokes for the leadership for the Lumbee uh, group, which was the Lumbee Regional Development Association. And they too said there was nothing they could do. So after we were out, that was the end of it. I didn't have the contact information. And I did not have the legal right to, to try to go up there and to find out even what they were talking about. But he said it was a lot of, lot of, uh, burial remains and um, sacred objects that come out of those burial sites. I don't know what happened to the remains. They're probably still there. But the crafts and artifacts, a lot of them are in Washington, D.C. now in the Native American Museum. They've been transferred over to the Native American Museum. Smithsonian. It's Smithsonian, but as far as the remains, I don't know where they're at. So the remains are unknown exactly where they might be. Mm -hmm. I've often heard that some, that they take the remains, the bones that they find, and a lot of times they won't even, you know, put them on display like they have in the past. They'll just put them in a cardboard box and put them in some drawer somewhere in a basement. That's what took place over in uh, the museum in Lornburg. I actually went over and met with the guy, and I asked him, he wanted me to come and meet with him, and I said, only if he'd let me see him. And so when I went there, he had them in small drawers and little paper bags, and I opened one of them, and, and in that bag was a little child's little pinky finger. And uh, I asked him at that point, where was his uh, grandparents buried? And he told me over at the Presbyterian graveyard, and I asked him, would he, how would he like for me to go over and dig his parents up? And I said, the best thing you could do is return my people, and I left. He wanted me to serve on his, his, on his committee there, but I told him I could not serve in a place like that where he had my people on display and in drawers. And the sad part about it is we have no control. They do what they want to do to us, and they won't leave us alone, living or dead. They want everything. In the name of research. Now, had the Catawba ever uh, stepped in and tried to help in some of these situations, or has, has anyone talked to the Catawba to see um, if we could get their support on some of these issues? The Catawba are pretty much, those folks are set up there. Anybody just get money from the BIA? 
start getting government money, they're not going to rock a boat. And we have enough intelligence not to go uh, to ask them. I, I tried to work with the Catawba, invited them over about six months ago, and as soon as they found out what we were doing, they actually asked us to take our, their names off of our, our, their mailing list, their email list. So um, I, can, I can tell you that these, go, these folks are not going to rock the boat with their money. Yeah, there's a lot of fear there. Okay. Well, um, uh, Beverly, is there anything else that that you might want to uh, tell the you know the people and uh, you know any other issues that uh, involving uh, what's going on currently there in that North Carolina area and with uh, the um, Three, uh, uh, Three Rivers United Nations, or the Clan Mothers. Are there any other issues that that uh, might connect to this, or are there any other issues that are separate from this that you would like to bring forward? We have issues with everything, but the thing of it is, is we got to start somewhere. And holding these lands is going to be it. without a holding place, a stronghold for us as Native people. Everything else is just going to be like a domino effect. It's all going to fall. But uh, I, what we want to see is that it's our time. This is our day. And so we're not going to claim that we're going to lose this thing. We're going to claim we're going to win it. We're not going to stop here. The state of North Carolina chooses to do what it does, and there's a federal government. There's federal laws and state laws to protect these burial mounds, and they've never, ever been utilized. So now we're smart enough, I think, that this is just the beginning. And, it, Scott, the thing of it is, is we're not the only ones going through this. Look at the Black Hills. Look at what the groups across the nation and Canada are going through. We've all been in contact with each other, and there's um, there's a, um, a group out there, I think they're from Canada, that says, I don't know more. And that's us. Right. We're not going to be idle anymore. We don't get federal dollars uh, for recognition. We pay taxes. So we have a voice in this thing. They shouldn't separate us in, you know, and just think that you can keep beating a dead horse to death, pretty much to say. But our people are tired. They've been pushed. There's nowhere else for us to run. There's nowhere else for us to go. This is the only place that we want to be, and it's a beautiful place. We love living here. And I think that a lot of folks, are, his eyes are opening. Once upon a time, they went along with tribal ways, and, and okay, this is what the leadership's going to do. But they're not utilizing the, their own programs and run. The Lummi tribe has its own issues. So it would be best that we keep it together and work with our tribes across the, the state. And so that's what we're hoping at the end of the day will happen. Now what I'd like to do is take the time, if anybody else, is it okay that if somebody else in here would like to say something? Certainly, yes. Okay, all the four of Anybody else want to say something about... We have our Star Warrior um, uh, and one of our red chiefs back in the back, Mr. Donnie Goins. Uh, he and Chief, uh, Chief Lynn Jacobs have done a great job of pulling the, the uh, Star Warrior Society together. They're very committed, and I'd like to commend them uh, for what they've been doing uh, each the second and the fourth Thursday and the month. They're pretty much dedicated to that, and, and Mr. Jacobs is also dedicated to the Sacred Fire, and that's the ceremony that goes on four times a year here. And those, those Sacred Fire uh, uh, ceremonies are here and have been here for 30 years. So what's going to happen when they come in and take all of that away? These folks come from all over to participate in that fire. So, Mr. Goins, would you like to say something? Other than, hey, we just, uh, any support, anything you can do to uh, draw attention to this, uh, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, we're just trying our hardest on it. Thanks a lot. What do you say, Chris? Not calling. Yes, this is this is Scott Collins. <laughs> this is Scott. I'm going to talk to you, We have a Meharan's representation here. We have Cherokee. We have Tuscarora. We have Suwon. We have um, we have the Shiraz. So we we have the Petey. We have a, a representation right in this room right now of. Um, these folks come in from different places and live here and 
you know, it's, it's just not a fight about names. It's a fight about survival at this point. Okay, great. Well, I guess that I guess that we'll, I'll go ahead and, and end the interview at this time. That way, you guys can um, get on with the, your meeting and you know any official business that you need to do. Um, I would like to to um, end the interview on a prayer, and so um, I'll, I'll I'll say a prayer, and then I'm going to ask you to say a prayer, um, and I'll and I'll go ahead and start, and then we'll let you finish. Um, Dokalino he ido, Isa Chihimi Isake, Kilanewa, Isa Lusmi Isake, Aku Kikitone, Ki Isa na Lus, Amahinewa Satasami, Atimatoa Satasami, Equalakwa Equalak Helkawami, Akutiati Amahina Akinase, Kimakina Asiko Minehi, Asiko Mamakle Akita Hahina Kukikohe, Yala Tewan, Amahayana Ke Koyatse, Yala Hina Kukikohe Tewan, Zawo Hasi Ase, Yahu Ahipake, Yukawe and Nikis Nedi, Nikas Anita Hukase, Asiko Oho. Yes. Hello? Yes, if you wanted to say a prayer to for this, you know, for these situations there and and for our ancestors to come in and and, and help us to accomplish these goals that need to be accomplished to protect our our peoples and our lands. Okay. Our dear congregation's heavenly Father, as we thy sons and daughters Bow our heads before thee this great wonderful day. We thank thee, Father, for the opportunity to meet with God and to talk with him about the things that we're going through. We know, Father, that you know everything, and you know that these are our sacred lands. And we know that you will protect us. You will guide, direct, and lead us in the ways that we should go. You promised us as long as that we would do the right things and stay behind thee, and to follow after your righteousness, that nothing and no one could take these things from us again and that you would give it all back to us. We know these things are true, Father, and we accept them. And we will go forth in righteousness and do all that you've called us to do. I pray, Father, that thy spirit will be upon these warriors, that they will hold their staff high and bow down no more, and to lead in righteousness by speaking the right kind words and moving swiftly as you lead them to do so. We pray that these, at this time that the spirit of the four winds would go out into this program that God involved us in to the four corners of this great nation on Turtle Island and to lift up all hearts and spirit to know that this is our day and that we will stand idle no more but stand together and rise up as a great nation. And we say these things this day in the name of thy beloved Son and our elder brother, even Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, I will we'll end on that note, and I will make sure that um, I get the, the, this interview out to uh, Native Voices United. Uh, we had a little bit of technical difficulty um, with the interview this evening because Esperanza, who normally does the interview, um, ha uh, had some bad news about her son in Arkansas, so she, she wasn't able to join us. But I'll make sure that I get this to her, and I'll also uh, put a copy of it up on YouTube so that we can get uh, the, a wide range of audience so that people can hear what's going on in North Carolina. And we're going to try to see if we can uh, uh, get people across the country and around the world to uh, you know, lend us support in, in all these issues. Thank you very much. Thank you. Young, my bro. Thank you, and y'all. You guys have a good evening, and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye bye. Bye bye.